Today, in 2023, the only people that will sell a new high-revving natural airspace V10 are Lamborghini, and they want £150,000 for the Hurricane. For that, you don't even get back seats. Instead, you can buy this, an E60 M5 with an 8,250 RPM V10, five seats, and a big boot. Cool, as usual, let's break it down piece by piece. So, first off, this is an M car, and as usual in an M car, the driving position is spot on. We've got loads of adjustability. This steering wheel is rake and reach adjustable electronically. I've got all the adjustment I want. I've got the steering wheel pointing to my chest. I've got nice bent arms and my legs stretching out in front of me, which is exactly how I want to sit in a car like this. My seat goes nice and low. It is unbelievably comfy. Uh, this is probably the comfiest BMW seat I've ever sat in. It is ridiculous. Um, nicely padded, nice tight bolsters, which are adjustable, which is great, and they pinch you in the corners. I've got great visibility. My head is kind of just in line with the dash, which is where I want it to be. I can place the car quite nicely. If I pop up, I can see the corners where the turrets would be, which means I can place the steering wheel nicely. And that brings us nice onto the steering itself. So, variable ratio rack, but it's super accurate already, straight off the line. It hasn't got that old school M car dead zone that the E39 and E46 had. So it gives you this telepathic sense of, you just flick your wrists and you're steering the car exactly where you want it to go. It's not dripping in feel, but there is feel. I know that right now the road beneath me is not that well paved. It's telling me how much grip I have. It's telling me how much camber the wheels have as I turn them. It's giving me all the information I want to know without being intrusive. So that means it's quite relaxing on a long, fast GT run, which is ultimately what this car is going to excel at. Um, but basically, it's a joy to use. The steering wheel is the right size. It's not super duper thick, uh, which some M car wheels are. It's just great. I think this is probably the best feeling steering wheel BMW's ever done, and they've done some really good ones. Uh, so definitely a high point there. And I've got some nice multifunction bits here surprising a huge monumental upgrade over the e395 when it comes to steering just out of that league let's see what this is like down a couple sets of corners so it's lively as you'd expect got a mechanical limited limited slip diff and the smg is a seven speed meaning the ratios are pretty tasty down low you've got really good acceleration out of a slow corner like that <laughs> Oh my god! Um, and the way it pulls out of a corner is obscene. It's absolutely ridiculous. This engine is a masterpiece. I believe it won engine of the year four times when it was new and you can see why. And then we've got M brakes. Now we've got single sliding calipers on this. This is the last generation of M car to have that, thankfully. Um, haven't got them to fade yet. They are massive, so that is in their favor. They probably would fade after some very hard use, but for the use case of this car, I think they are actually adequate. And like all BMW single sign cab brakes, when you put decent pads and fluid in them, they are decent. You know, they're not amazing, but they are decent. The pedal feel is great. It's genuinely so good. And you're not gonna get that with uh, carbon ceramics or massive four pot or six pot brakes. Pedal feels really nice, the modulation is really nice. It's not over boosted uh, like later cars are. It's just exactly where you want it to be. This is the first M5 that you can get in manual in the UK. And when this came out, all everyone could talk about was this SMG3 gearbox. So what's it actually like? First off, what is an SMG gearbox? SMG gearbox is a sequential manual with an automated clutch. So we have a manual gearbox underneath the transmission tunnel. Uh, the clutch is electro hydraulically actuated by the ECU. So I've got no clutch pedal uh, and the gears are changed by these lovely paddles here um, or down here if you want to be a traditionalist. And you've got, you can select basically how quickly the clutch engages. When you're on it, you basically get full <laughs> clutch dump power shifts, which feels ridiculous in, in the best possible way. 
When he ran town though, that's where things got controversial because these do have an auto mode. And to be completely frank, it's only really good for when you're stuck in stand tall traffic on the motorway. It will let you creep forward and get in second, get up to speed without having to do anything. But it's a bit like when you first start learning how to drive and you don't know how to use the gears properly. However, if you drive this in manual mode around town, it's just like using a manual gearbox, but you don't have to do the clutch. So it is actually a really nice compromise in my opinion. Um, because you can drive around town, you select your gears, you're in control, uh, far more so than you are with a traditional auto, but you don't need to bother doing a clutch. And when you just drive this normally and lift between gears, it's perfectly smooth. It's smoother than I would be in a manual car, especially considering how notchy uh, most manual gearbox BMWs are. So genuinely, if I had a choice between choosing this car, an E60 M5 in manual SMG, I would 100% go for SMG because I just don't see manual suiting a car this big. So let's talk about this engine. Now, as we said, it's naturally aspirated, individual thought bodies, drive-by-wire, um, I believe four engine awards, maybe five engine of the year awards. Got 100 horsepower per litre, so 500 horsepower, five litres, equal length exhaust manifolds. It's a masterpiece, it really is. It revs to 8,250 RPM, and you want to use all of that rev range to get the best out of it. That's not to say that it's lacking low-end torque. We've still got a five-litre engine here, and you know, if we try and do a pull from 3K, it picks up pretty nicely. You know, you could overtake someone like that and not have to drop down the gear, which is great. But when you... When you want just a little bit more... Oh my God. It's just... <laughs> oh, how is this legal? <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how they're made to make this. Uh, yeah, great engine. <laughs> really, really great engine. Probably the best they ever, ever did, to be honest, because it's the last natural aspirated M5. Um, and this generation of engine, because the S65 derived from this, was the last natural aspirated engine that BMW um, developed. And you can tell that they really put that all into making this one. It must have cost an, you know, an absolutely obscene amount to do a ground up engine based on no other engine at all. You know, BMW didn't make a V8 or V10 in this format before, so they developed this engine solely for this car. Which is even crazy when you think about how limited the production of these were. I mean, they just didn't sell that many M5s ever of any generation. This is a very expensive, very exclusive car when it was new, especially compared to M3s, which obviously they just, you know, churned out and churned out. So props to BMW, I'm really glad they made this because it does some pretty amazing things. <laughs> What I will say, we've got a natural SV10 here and it's quite muted. I think this car is begging, it's absolutely begging for an aftermarket exhaust or a back box fleet or a resonator fleet or just something. Cause you can hear it running and it sounds good, but you just want more. You, just, you want a hard edged rust, which I know that this engine is capable of delivering with just probably some minor exhaust mods or a carbon airbox from Evolve or something like that. But yeah, that's my, that's my only criticism of this engine is that it's just, you just want more all the time. I just, I want more induction, I want more exhaust. I want to hear it scream as it hits that, that obscenely high rev limiter. And the other thing we should talk about really is the ethos behind this because this V10 uh, came out when BMW was still racing in F1. Um, and this was meant to be an F1 inspired V10. It hasn't got any direct connection to the F1 cars, but the uh, development of this engine was inspired by F1. It was designed to get you as close as possible to that experience in a saloon car. So the paddles and the engine and that red line all add up to a really magical experience that's just so different to anything you would have had in something like an M3 or, you know, Skyline or Supra. It's very far off that kind of small tuna car this is really more like a supercar in a saloon chassis and honestly it really really delivers so back in second gear that pickup is instant we've got individual thought bodies here powers right up near the red line nice bit of engine braking there so when you do lift off super reactive ratios are super nice for road use God, this thing is just ridiculous. <laughs> Now, 
We've spoken about E6 Gen 5 as a whole, let's just talk about this specific one. So, Silverstone Blue, in my opinion, best colour for this. It looks almost like raw metal. I don't know if you guys remember when the E6 Gen 5 concept came out. Um, I remember reading about it in Car Magazine way back then and they did the concept in a very special uh, kind of three-stage uh, silver grey and it gave this car that awesome look of just being milled out of one block of raw aluminium and you combine that with the flame surfacing of the Bangal era cars and it makes it a really nice, uh, really gorgeous looking car. Silverstone Blue, I believe, is an M exclusive colour. So you see this, you know it's an M5 and I think it shows off the lines of these cars really well. Don't get me wrong, I love an E60 in a darker colour like Interlagos Blue or Carbon Black or Sapphire Black or all that kind of stuff. But I think these look absolutely gorgeous in a silver or, or silvery blue like Silverstone Blue or Silver Grey. I think those are really the colours for these cars. We've got the Diamond Cut 5 spoke 19s on this. Great looking wheel. Got a sunroof, which is nice, suits the car. You wouldn't want an M3, but an M5 it does suit it. And we've got this gorgeous brushed aluminium trim, which uh, I remember from the E46 M3 days, that's a facelift only option, super rare, super expensive, and super desirable now. Um, probably more common in the E6 M5, but it's absolutely stunning. And it's actual aluminium, it's not plastic. Feels really nice, gives the car a great feel and it suits this era of car where brushed aluminium was the craze. Everyone wanted it in their houses, on their worktops, all that kind of stuff. Black leather interior suits the feel of an M car. In my opinion, I think I would want this with a dark interior. Great stereo, obviously we've got iDrive being an M5. I believe with iDrive, you can retrofit Apple CarPlay if you so desire and use the original OEM screen and all that kind of stuff. Overall, really nice place to be. Now, we've just come through a town here, so I'll tell you what it's like to be in around town because ultimately this is a 5 Series with, you know, it's got a V10 engine but it is a 5 Series. First off, super comfy. We're on massive 19s here, but even on a rutted road like this, suspension just soaks it all up. We've got EDC, uh, which is a variable damper, so you can stiffen it up if you want a bit more body control. But to be honest, on UK roads, you're best off just leaving it in soft. You don't get much body roll, but we'll get onto that later. But around town, we've got the gearbox and manual, slowing to a stop here. And I'll show you what it's like to set off in first. Just tap the accelerator, clutch engages, and we're off, just as usual. Stick it in second. If you can drive a manual gearbox, you can drive one of these with ease. You wouldn't know that it's had all of this controversy around the automatic mode and SMG around town, all that kind of stuff. The thing is, if you're buying this car in 2023, you're buying it partially as a character purchase. You know, you want that natural aspect V10 and you want the whole experience of this generation of M. And the SMG is a very authentic way to experience this because this was the technology at the time. They had just come out with DCT in the uh, E92 M3, great gearbox, but this is, this gives you that real old school sequential gearbox feel, which at the time was such an evocative concept, this idea that you can get to you know, an F1 car or a touring car and you've got a pneumatic sequential gearbox and it thumps you in the back when you shift and basically it feels special. Oh my God. It just it blows you away. I mean, this is the level of body control and power that we have here is out of this world. It's so far away from what came before this world. Well. The E395 was a great car, but in terms of sheer outright performance, this is unbelievably quick. Those full pelt 10 tenths shifts at the red line are just, they're obscene. They're absolutely ridiculous. They're one of the best things I've ever experienced behind the wheel. Honestly, it's unbelievable. They're entertainment in themselves. This is a car that can entertain you just doing a pull down a door carriage with no corners. But when you do get corners, you realize that as much as this is a saloon that you could commute in, this really is a sports car underneath. It's, a, it's actually a full-on supercar. It's absolutely insane. The body control and the brakes and the steering give you, the, they just, it just eggs you on so much. So I'll show you a little bit here. We've got a nice twist section bit of road. We've got everything off here, full fat, 
SMG at max speed. Loads of traction, get the nose tucked into a corner, feed the power in. Oh my God. Honestly, you would think this is on, is on some sort of trick, active anti robot suspension, the way it manages its weight, but it's actually just great damping and really nicely set up springs. It's crazy. I've never driven anything like it. The amount of confidence you have in this. And those shifts, I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but. <laughs> oh man. I can't believe you can get this experience for what these cars go for. This to me is a hundred grand experience. I would, you know, this is what I would expect. Uh, something like a Ferrari 612, or even like a, I don't know, a Lamborghini Gallardo or something like that. So I feel like it's absolutely ridiculous. This will mix it with the best of them, honestly. So sure, you can buy this as a, as alternative D3905 or whatever, but actually, if you see this as basically a budget Ferrari with all of the performance, it's an absolute bargain. I can't, I can't go over the fact how good this is. Honestly, this could be 10 times more impractical to drive and you'll forgive it for all its flaws when you get a little squirt down the country lane. I'm lucky enough to drive some pretty tasty stuff here at Shooting Brake, but this E6105 really stuck with me. Never before have I driven a car that so boldly defies its on paper origins. This may look like an E60 and may come from a lineup of capable, relatable M5s, but take no notice. The E60 M5 is a true full fat supercar. This is, without a single doubt, the most uncompromised, hardcore, single minded, enthusiast focused M car ever created. They will never, ever make something like this ever again. I absolutely adored driving it. I hated the one touch indicators and iDrive HVAC controls, but frankly, who cares? This M5 drives well enough to buy solely as a Sunday Blast Euro Trip ring ready supercar. It just so happens that you can fit four adults inside of it. I would happily cross shop this against a Ferrari 599, Audi R8, or Lamborghini Gallardo. That may sound absurd, but then really and truly, what's normal about a bespoke V10 8250 RPM family saloon? If you fancy supercar performance for a tenth of the cost, this gorgeous Silverstone Blue E60 M5 is definitely the car for you. It's coming live to shooting break on auction with over 100 detailed photographs and a comprehensive description. Buyers can bid in confidence and after a couple of clicks, you can get this very car on your driveway.